Please note that police chases can be dangerous and unpredictable. We do not condone reckless driving or any other illegal activity. Our videos are intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. A lot of crashes out here, especially with that high-speed driving. And now we have somebody in a stolen truck. We don't know if that driver is familiar with this vehicle or if this was a crime of opportunity. And you can clearly see it right there. Speeds are really starting to pick up. Let me turn on some of that high-tech stuff we have. 55 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour. That's not what you want to see on the Pacific Coast Highway. And then, of course, with this bigger truck coming to a stop right there, running through another red light. This is uh, These are the problems that we've been worried about. And then some pedestrians in that crosswalk as well. But again, stolen vehicle pursuit happening right now. Pacific Palisades is the area. Malibu is going to be our next stop. And of course, California, I, I keep saying that, LAPD, the ones behind it right now, they have an airship up ahead, up, up above, and they're keeping an eye on it. But maybe the Sheriff's Department will get involved, especially if it gets into the Malibu area. <laughs> oof, oof, oof. Yes. Yeah, it, it, you can you can see this thing rocking, especially when he's going off the roadway like that. It, you know, then you get off the off the roadway, you get into those dips. It, it, you know, it might not be a bad thing if he does something like that, and then the truck gets stuck or just gets stopped along the hillside there. Right now, those speeds are definitely kind of picking up. You can see it once again. But this driver really not concerned about any of those red lights or any of the traffic. Every time we've come into any kind of situation where there are other vehicles around him, he's made every effort to get around. Meaning you know, going the, on the wrong side of the road or far over to the right. So this vehicle clearly not stopping, clearly being very defiant of the laws. And again, continuing on, LAPD, I'm wondering if they've dropped there. They are way back there. I Well, I don't want to get too far away because we're coming up on some other... Uh, other traffic is what I just heard. It's kind of up there, but you can see all that stop traffic. This is uh, where it's going to get tense once again. If this driver decides to go onto oncoming traffic around those corners, we just don't want to see any of that. He's choosing that right shoulder, which is probably the better bet right there. But again, squeezing through, squeezing through, and again, just kind of making his way. Look, he's, he's actually being blocked by another another uh, bobtail truck. Don't know if they're doing that on purpose or maybe he just wants to get over to the right to make a right turn. But again, these tense situations, you just don't want to see anybody get hurt, not even that suspect. You know, I haven't heard, and I've been trying to peek. It's funny that you just brought that up. I really was just looking inside the cab, trying to figure out if we could get a good look at the driver. And right now, it's just one of those situations where we have to keep the signal up. That means we have to keep up a little altitude. And, of course, LAPD, they are down low as well. But that truck kind of rocking around, I'm kind of wondering if it's really heavily loaded, meaning maybe there's a lot of supplies in the back or possibly this is empty. But it does seem to rock a lot, especially when they start making those hard turns, which leads me to believe that there is some weight in there, which doesn't make the situation any better. As they, you know, the this thing being heavily loaded, that's going to create some issues for performance. And of course, you got a little bit of rain out here. I know Maria's been talking about that. The roads are starting to get damp, especially out here in the Malibu area, officially now in the Malibu area. And again, this is going to be roughly, it, it always gets kind of weird, but we're heading north. We're heading north uh, out towards uh, the northern part of Malibu, clearly, Pacific Coast highway is the road the speeds well you know 50 miles an hour that's not slow but at least they're not getting up in the up here we go up it, taking up some of that center divider but uh, it's kind of blending in with a lot of the other traffic I'm gonna get a little bit wider to get an idea what's happening ahead of it you got a little bit of traffic again up ahead but it seems like he's 
moving along with the flow of traffic, which is good. But uh, right now, LAPD, they're going to want to bring this to an end safely. Now he's starting to take up that center divider once again. Don't know why. There isn't really anybody behind him anymore. It looks like the uh, black and whites that were on the ground have dropped farther back or maybe even discontinued, uh, possibly because of the location, meaning we're getting into the sheriff's area, and or they might be going into tracking mode. They might... They're hoping that the driver of this truck might calm down a little bit, drive a little safer, maybe try to do one of those, I'm going to stop here, get out, and run. That's what It's all about public safety. That's what law enforcement is always thinking about first. Yeah. De you definitely can't see anything when they come around those t corners. And uh, we've been covering a lot of these high-speed crashes out here. And, you, you know, we never get an idea of how fast those cars are going. We just say that they were speeding. Right now, technically, he's kind of in the pack down there. He's going with the flow of traffic. So I venture to say that when we see those numbers, 40-something miles an hour, that's about right. And that would also mean that whoever the commander is this uh, morning that basically told the, the units on the ground, just back off, just back off. We're going to let the helicopter handle it. There, it, it is working. That truck driving a little bit more, less reckless is probably the best way to s describe it. And as, we, as, as I say that, now the speed's starting to pick up once again. Believe me, I'm not blind to the fact that it says fast delivery on the side of that truck. But right now, you just don't want to poke any fun at this because this could become a very dangerous situation, especially on Pacific Coast Highway, bigger truck like that, and the way this driver is driving this morning. You know, as far as law enforcement goes, the only thing that uh, we can I can say for sure is the LAPD helicopter still above it. They're keeping an eye. Also, would venture to say that, and again, this is more of just a guess, is that they are calling it out to the uh, sheriff's department. Now, is the sheriff's department going to get involved? That's a that's a kind of a call for other people that are pay grade much higher than mine. They may I'm using the word may they may be setting up a little bit ahead of it and possibly will be using some sort of trying to use some sort of spike strips maybe to pop some of those tires or let the air out of those tires so that it turns this and you know brings that truck to a stop. As it stands right now, it's more of a wait and see type of situation. LAPD they're biding their time. They've got that helicopter over it. They're going to keep an eye on it. And of course we're here as well but as far as on the ground lights and sirens at this moment nobody is behind it in a, in an actual pursuit and it, it actually is working you can see those numbers dropping there that truck driving more of the uh, freeway uh, the, the road posted speeds and uh, keeping that keeping safer uh, type of a situation and that really is what it's all about that's the only thing that you know law enforcement they of course they want to catch the bad guys they want to get the criminals with, with those cuffs on but in the end, it's all about safety, and that's what they're thinking about right now. And it does seem like their tactics are working. Those speeds have dropped. That vehicle's driving a little bit more safer. And uh, as I say that, you can see him kind of picking up speed once again. But as it stands, it's going to be more of a follow along and see what happens. And right now, that, that driver, that, that stolen vehicle, 
Uh, using that center lane to pass that one vehicle that is probably driving the speed limit. And you can see them picking up a little bit of speed. And again, you know they're coming up probably on another uh, uh, light, but I'm going to just take a peek. But they're not. But there is a lot of traffic out here. And there's that LAPD helicopter I was talking about. So they're keeping an eye on it. And if hopefully uh, this driver doesn't actually collide with anybody, and maybe this will just kind of come to an end where the driver decides, you know, this is a spot, I'm going to jump out and try and run. But uh, yeah. other than that, this is all we can do right now is keep an eye on what's going on. Oh, did Ran he just light. take a red light there? Yeah. So, Stu, yeah, the language uh, important, obviously, when we cover these breaking news types of stories. You just said at this point it's a follow along, see what happens. Does that mean it's not a pursuit? When do we categorize it as a pursuit? It, does it depend on if there are black and whites following this vehicle? That's when we would call it a pursuit. Well, you know, when, they, when when I call it a pursuit, that would be when I hear the uh, like hear the law enforcement actually say we're re-engaging the pursuit or we are in pursuit of, uh, and we have actually not heard that. We've actually seen the opposite. The uh, they've backed down, and again, it's not a it's a judgment call on somebody other than us. And of course, they seem to be doing the right thing. In the beginning, you saw it. This vehicle driving very very recklessly, uh, trying to move get away from those officers. Now, now, you know, 60 miles an hour in heavy rain coming around a corner, that's that's going to create a dangerous situation as well. But the, as far as the actual law enforcement behind it, we're not seeing any of that right now. And, of course, those lights and sirens, they could be helping uh, the folks on the ground, the civilians that are just driving today. They might hear those lights and sirens, you get, make, them, uh, make them kind of keep an eye on what's going on. We understand we have another solid red coming up as we're making our way over here by Pepperdine. Going to keep an eye on it. Hopefully this driver of this truck will make the right decisions and not collide with any other drivers. Looks like he's choosing that far right that looked like it was open just a moment ago. And if it's getting a little blurry for our viewers, believe me, I know it. I'm frustrated as well. That's actually just rain on the lens, yeah, making it a little difficult to see. How bad is it raining there, Stu? Because I know that area has been plagued with debris and mud flow along PCH in Malibu. In fact, in one area going down to one lane as this box truck gets farther north or west, I should say, on PCH, there is uh, limited access in that area as well. Uh, Hey, I'm, I'm sorry. We, I was just hearing that the uh, LAPD is going to be backing off and that the sheriff's helicopter is going to be taking it over here. No, oh, they're not taking it over. So the sheriff's department, they are going to be made aware on the ground that the uh, vehicle, that this is a stolen vehicle coming through their area. Are they going to be able to put out those spike strips? Are they going to re-engage this in a pursuit? That's going to be a wait and see type of situation until we actually know it. We really can't say it. But I can tell you that the LAPD helicopter, yeah, he got called back. He's making that U-turn. He's heading back into the city area. We're passing the Pepperdine area right now. That truck kind of blending in a little bit as far as speeds go as far as Sandra as far as your question you know as far hopefully I was actually kind of hoping that maybe we would get into like those uh, traffic situations where it does come down to one lane and that would be the opportunity for law enforcement to make their move kind of just make their presence or try to block it in or whatever they could do but right now it's just going to be a rainy road Pacific Coast Highway we're northbound and we're going to keep an eye on it it really is everybody's call if the uh, sheriff's department gets involved that's uh, that's up to their their bosses their commanders somebody's probably listening and making a decision right now and also availability they might not have a unit that is patrolling nearby and they might have to get into position and then again he's right back to the safety you know how fast do we want our guys to get there in the rain on Pacific Coast Highway do we know how this whole thing began? Was it a call that came in? I know it's a stolen box truck, but is this person familiar with the company? Did they work there? Do you know anything about that? No, Jen, I don't, and I wish I did because those that kind of the, those those little nuggets of information really really help as far as making a decision call for us or you know it, does this guy know this truck or was this a crime of opportunity was this a you know maybe an unhoused person that saw the keys in the vehicle all those questions we don't really know we do know that it was some sort of following 
and that I would venture to believe that there's a tracking device on that vehicle because there were no black and whites behind it until those ones that we saw arriving. But somehow that uh, airship, the, P the PD ship, they knew that this was a, a, a stolen vehicle. So my guess, it's some sort of tracking device inside there. I don't know if we still use LoJack or whatever the ones that they use, but uh, I believe there must be something like that in there. And that also might be one of the reasons why law enforcement is basically just saying, you know what, let this guy drive this out, park that vehicle. You know, uh, stolen property can be replaced, injuries, somebody losing their life, that's something entirely different. Yeah, it's certainly uh, looking a little more dangerous as the rain starts coming down, that box truck approaching an area where, as you see from some of the barricades right there, where it is narrowing Big down rock. in terms of the road because of previous debris flow into the area on PCH and obviously construction there, as it is PCH being a dangerous road to travel on, especially when, it, when you talk about something like this and the nature of how narrow that street is in the Malibu area approaching Ventura right now, as well as the amount of traffic that PCH really handles in that area in terms of uh, vehicles as well as cyclists. Obviously, it's raining, so not as many out there at this point. But clearly, look at how narrow it is. If there was more traffic, it would be an even more dangerous situation still. Oh, definitely. And, you know, the, it, it, I'm actually thinking, you know, I always, we do so many of these and we've seen this so much in the past. I worry that the roadway might get congested, meaning they're, you know, down to one lane where we are right now and then possibly traffic. And then this driver going into oncoming traffic, we've seen him do it a couple of times already. And that really is something that has been going through my mind. You know, we just don't want to see anybody get hurt. He's making that move right now. We've been, he's been following that Jeep for quite a bit. He's probably looks like he's trying to speed up to get around it. Why? You know what? This is the thing. It's like, who are you running from right now? You're not running from anybody. You're running from your own demons as far as that goes, because there is nobody chasing that vehicle right now. Yes, of course, you have a lot of eyes on it. We're watching it, and if hopefully that some law enforcement is probably watching our picture as well. There comes some Caltrans. I know Sandra was talking about it, and this is exactly what you've been saying. We've had a lot of mudslides out here. That, that far right lane has been uh, closed in a lot of locations. And now look at that truck and look at the amount of water that's on the road. You can see that the, those trails coming from that those rear wheels. So there is standing water on that roadway. So when they speed up like that, believe me, I do get a little bit more worried. And again, you just saw that kind of weave and then that thing rocks like that. It, it just all adds and adds and adds. But again, I'm sure this is what law enforcement, somebody's probably watching, maybe our digital feed or maybe the show right now. And they are kind of you know, making a decision call do we get involved do we not as far as the uh, Malibu uh, Pete uh, Malibu Sheriff's Department Lost Hills uh, Station I am trying to listen I haven't heard them talk about it but I know for a fact that they're aware that this is going on um, we want to show the video from earlier because right now what we're seeing is this car just going or this truck just driving in a straight line not much uh, happening intense wise but look at what happened earlier where he went on the opposite end of the road, right, against traffic. There you see people in their vehicles unsure of what's happening, but they do give him space, or him or her, we don't know if it's a man or woman behind the wheel, give that driver space uh, so that they don't get hit. There you see the police car in close pursuit. So quite a bit has changed from earlier to right now, but definitely the driver driving recklessly, uh, making a number of changes and violations that are illegal to do so. The roads being wet obviously complicates the matter further because you don't know um, what is in this truck, right? Uh, what's being carried in the truck, how many people are in the truck, what lengths this person is willing to go to to try to escape the police. Um, and yes, this is already a very difficult road to drive on when conditions are perfect, let's say, on a sunny, dry day. But now uh, we're watching this vehicle. It seems like he is or she is picking up speed mm -hmm. as we continue to watch. It 
Definitely, and we just did a little bit of a tight shot in there and just kind of grabbed a look at that driver the best we could. I don't know if you guys saw that mm -hmm, or not, mm -hmm. but it definitely looks like if it is a uh, uh, a, a unhoused person, it's a very dr well-dressed unhoused person. As far as we could see, just the driver and, uh, and the cab is empty. The speeds, though, they're getting up into the 60-mile-an-hour mark. The, the only plus to that is that there's not a lot of other vehicles around at this portion of the Malibu area. So that was uh, that's a benefit. Benefit, but you know, with those higher speeds, if there's something comes up in front of him or he gets his, something catches this driver's eye, this could become a real problem very, very quickly. You can see right now, though, that again, you just the way we can gauge the amount of water on the roadway is that those rooster tails coming off those rear wheels. Now that is a pretty. That's a lot of water, so that means that there is a lot of standing water right there, and also you can get an idea of the speeds. That's pretty accurate because we're a full push right there, and it's solid on that vehicle, so. This truck going about 60 miles and 65 miles an hour. Let's be real about it. As we're getting closer to Zuma, his hands is out the window. I wonder if he's he clearly has the window down. I wonder if that's because he's starting to sweat a little bit, realizing you know, getting worried about what's happening. As far as the ride goes, you can see it kind of moving around. Looks like we're set. Nope, I thought maybe we were setting up for Kane and Dune, but just running another solid red there, very nonchalantly, which also worries me. If you have that type of confidence, you know. Before before great fall comes great pride. We all know that one. So we're going to keep an eye on it for sure. The speed's definitely picking up as we're getting over towards Zuma. And Pacific Coast Highway, where are you going to go with this? I mean, if he decides to take one of those canyon roads, it's going to be even more hair-raising with that truck in making those tight turns. So the other plan might be, this driver might be thinking, I'm just going to go up to Ventura. Uh, I can tell you, Ventura CHP, They've got there's a they're they're a feisty breed up there. I'm gonna say that for <laughs> sure. If they are probably another solid red right there. Red. If they get that far and we're still with it, this is probably gonna have a much different type of ending than down here. But as it stands, this is a stolen vehicle, kind of on its own now, making its way northbound on Pacific Coast Highway, and we're getting into the northern part of Malibu right now. Roads wide open, but definitely raining out here this uh, this morning. Yeah, they're no joke in Ventura, and he is approaching that county line in about 10 miles, I believe, uh, being familiar with that area. But gosh, you could see all that rain coming down and just how saturated PCH is right now. And look at the speeds in that rain. That is certainly frightening because not only if there's a spin out that occurs, would that person be jeopardizing themselves, but also all of the other cars, even on the other direction the oncoming traffic in the other lanes they're at jeopardy as well but look at all of that rain you could tell by as Stu was mentioning the as he called the rooster tails coming off of the tires right there all of that uh, slick rain Ooh, and he's going to the left I don't know if he's sliding around Stu it, it, oh, oh wow! I think he, think he, I, he might have just clipped that. There might have been a little paint swap right there on that, uh, on that K rail. Uh, you know, and, and again, that kind of stuff. It just, you just watch, and you're just thinking to your, what you know. It, I get that a lot. It's like, what are they thinking? I have no idea. I can, I clearly have no idea what this driver's thinking. Possibly, maybe he was on his phone right there. But you saw it. You called it out, Sandra. He was, was kind of wobbling back and forth, and and uh, and for a moment, I was thinking maybe. It was just, uh, you know, the high speeds, and he just we didn't want to, he was just kind of drifting through those lanes, trying to take advantage of the, uh, the the empty roadway. But then when he kind of clipped that little thing right there, it makes me think maybe he's just not paying attention, which is just adds to the trouble. Uh, you, you can see went through a lot of water right there, a lot of muddy water, so there is a little bit of a mudslide. Uh, but uh, continuing on, and northbound is the game right here. We're going to be getting out of the uh, Malibu area before we know it, getting into Ventura County. I'm not sure if California Highway Patrol is going to be waiting for them up there, but we, you know, we've covered enough of these, and I know the, the jurisdictions, and it seems like whenever we get into that Ventura County area, those, Cal those California Highway Patrol guys, they don't appreciate any kind of chases on their freeways at all. And uh, this is going to be in the Pacific Coast, off of Pacific Coast Highway, but it's still part of their jurisdiction. So we're going to keep an eye on it for sure, as I'm being told, and uh, we'll keep watching it as we're making our way north Bound. But the rain definitely getting worse. Traffic getting lighter. But uh, it's a trade off for sure. It's still going to be very dangerous, especially with those speeds and that driver paying less attention. I don't know what he was doing right there, but uh, going a little wider just to give you an idea of what's ahead. It looks like it's open road for the most part. 
but he has, hasn't slowed down or uh, stopped at any red lights since we picked this up. Stu, he is not listening to our advice here on Good Day LA, which is if the road shines, take your time, amongst other things. He is not listening to that advice. He's definitely not listening to that excellent, excellent advice, Jen. But uh, we're keeping up with him for sure. A lot of oncoming traffic, which is interesting as well. But I'm kind of wondering if Cal if uh, the uh, Sheriff's Department might be trying to set something up, at least to uh, be in the area just in case he does kind of just pull over. But you just, you know, we never know what they're thinking. But for this vehicle just to stop and have this guy get out and run, in this neighborhood, I mean, it, it just doesn't make any sense. There's no really no place to hide. There's no place you can kind of blend in. It's all mansions and uh, and hillsides out here. So it would be very difficult for that, or probably the, the driver thinking he's got no place to go. So he's going to have to drive up into the Ventura County area to actually even try to find a place just to get out of that vehicle and run. There's no way that this, uh, this person is going to get away with that truck, especially everybody knowing it. And then, of course, we believe that there's some sort of tracking device in there. So right now, though, you can see it is getting more rainy. I'm going to have to talk with Dylan here for a bit. But as he hasn't he hasn't shouted out any problems with uh, with visibility as it stands. He just said we're all right right now. So uh, we're just going to keep an eye on it, keep watching it, and uh, keep trying to figure out where he's going to go, what he's going to do. And uh, I'd like to know what's in the back of that. That's my personal question because... It's a Lowe's delivery truck, so, you know, there could be any kind of number of things in there. And I don't think it's a rental. I don't think this is like a customer rents this to bring his stuff to wherever they need to be. I think this is what, you know, Lowe's uses for to deliver things to job sites and or, or homes. Well, I hope they get their money back on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say. Uh, no. Yeah, no money back on that one for sure, but uh, just kind of keeping an eye on it. it it's uh, in speeds. I wondering if that's accurate right now because we are getting a little bit farther behind it because I don't think he's going 80 miles an hour but he is starting to take those turns a little hard no uh, red lights coming up uh, Neptune's net should be here shortly that uh, is a great place to eat if you're in the area I don't think he's the suspect's going to be stopping there today and trying to grab a live lobster <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, you can see it let me take a look here Look how wide open this roadway is and uh, how much farther we have to go before e even another intersection. Again, we're just going to kind of keep watching and seeing what's going on. Yeah, as we keep watching, we are approaching the noon hour. And uh, when we do, uh, we will continue to follow this stolen box truck on Fox 11. KCOP, formerly known as Channel 13. Fox 11 Plus will go back Downtown. to Juan Malibu and clearly wide open right there as the rain keeps coming down along PCH. It's uh, it, it is one of these ones where we just kind of watch and wait. It's you know it, he's uh, keeping those speeds uh, well above whatever's posted down there. I can guarantee it. I just saw the brake lights come on. I was actually thinking to myself, that's the first time I saw that. There does seem to be a sign saying that there is another uh, light up coming up ahead. I just saw that. So I'm gonna just kind of take a peek and see how much farther it is up there. But maybe that wasn't a, a stoplight or a signal coming up. Maybe that was just more of a watch your speed type of light because he's definitely moving well faster than any of the other traffic down there. Uh, you know, you just don't know also. I mean, it is a delivery truck. It is early in the morning. You'd venture to say that the whoever the uh, assigned driver to this was, not that suspect, you know, they probably filled it up or it was at least full with gas when they started. And those trucks, they can go quite a distance. So as far as running out of fuel, I would venture to say that's not going to be happening. And as soon as I say it, he might run out of gas. But uh, you can see it continuing on up there, and it's getting it's the rain definitely coming down in the Ventura area. You see a lot of those signs. I know for a fact that we've been doing uh, coverage out here because they closed all the lanes. I'm wondering if they had reopened any of that. We're going to find out here shortly, I'm sure. But I would venture to say they have just because of the fact that all the, you see traffic coming the other direction, and, of course, we haven't seen any of the uh, cones or any of the signs. But, again, that truck this uh, morning or now getting into 
the afternoon hours, starting to use some of those center lanes, starting those speeds picking up once again. Don't know why he's speeding it up. Maybe he's thinking that, you know, it's getting close to noon. I got to be somewhere. But uh, I just worry when you start seeing it sw sw swerve a little bit or him going through those bigger puddles. I don't want to see this thing hydroplane. I just don't want to see anybody get hurt. All right, Stu, uh, it is 12.01. And uh, helicopter, air travel, any uh, on-the-ground vehicles, or have they pretty much taken the tack that, um, uh, you know, everybody else has to this point? Well, it's interesting. Uh, the, there's no helicopter that I'm aware of overhead. We're in Ventura County now, so it'll be interesting to see how they handle it. There is a patrol car, though, coming up pretty quick, and he's about, I would say, uh, I don't know, a quarter of a mile behind. Uh, you look out your window there, Marcel, you'll see him. It's kind of too far for us to open up. We might be able to. It's going to be way off to your left. What's going to happen here in a moment is we're going to have to travel right on top of some clouds, some low-level clouds. So from time to time, we're going to lose the vehicle, but the vehicle will come back in, and that patrol car I was talking about is coming up at a rate of speed in which he's going to intercept the truck. So it will be interesting to see how Ventura County handles this. You know, we can lose altitude now and go through that uh, hole there because of our signal. We'll be fine here. Um, and that's a CHP. It's not Ventura County Sheriff. So it's CHP. And it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, just how they handle this uh, as we come up into this area of Ventura County. And there's the clouds you're talking about. Fortunately, we can descend quite a bit now and still get our signal because of where we're at. Uh, at least I hope so when we're trying, but you get an idea what we're dealing with as far as uh, the weather conditions. It is very wet now. I certainly wouldn't call it a hard rain, but you can tell how slick the conditions are. And now we're coming up into that area where, you know, we're going to start to cross over and we're going to head up into uh, Oxnard. And then that's that area I talked about where PCH uh, does uh, go through an area where there's a little more congestion. And now there are four units behind them, so it looks like they may engage uh, they may engage the suspect as we continue north. Uh, we're still in Camarillo. We've got a ways to go before we're in Oxnard. But they, they may re-engage. Open up, Marcel. Give me a wide shot. There are four vehicles total, patrol cars. And you're going to see one come to the bottom of your screen there. They actually stopped at the intersection. So we'll go back into the truck. They're actually <laughs> they're staying back and not letting the suspect see them. So at this point in time, they really have not re-engaged. But it looks like they're ready to if they decide to. And uh, go ahead, Marcel. And, uh, tilt up with the camera and this will give you an idea of what's up ahead you know we talked about this a little bit there's going to be a little more congestion on PCH uh, as you head up towards uh, the 101 freeway and so as, as we head through there we're going to see some stoplights we're going to see possibly more pedestrian traffic and uh, the risk is going to get higher once again now and it'll be interesting to see what the demeanor of the suspect is and just how desperate he is if he comes up on an intersection up ahead where we have a red light and that looks like that may happen here in just a moment okay scott we're going to wrap up coverage of this on uh, the the linear portion abc7 and return our viewers to uh, regular programming but we are going to continue this chase on our streaming abc7 la streaming app so if you'd like to continue to watch this you can join us on our uh, streaming platform and right now we're going to return you to regular schedule of programming along with Giovanna Lara, Scott Reif, and Philip Palmer. Thank you for this special coverage of this chase there that is go. now whoa, into Ventura. Whoa, whoa. whoa, and we gotta wow. do I'm I'm just gonna ask one more time if we want to <laughs> stay with this for a moment or if we're going to still break away. We're think, we're gonna keep with this just for a second, Scott, because now this is so this is becoming traffic not good and in the oncoming traffic around right. this. This is the behavior that was happening earlier and it's just yeah. come right back. So we are going to stay with this now. Yeah. We have uh, officers that have engaged right behind and the suspect now that has uh, <laughs> met traffic yeah. resistance has taken a much more aggressive uh, measure, Scott. Yeah, this is just senseless because the patrol cars weren't right behind this individual. So whether he sees the patrol cars or not, he's going to drive like that. And that, that goes into, uh, you know, the thought process of the uh, CHP at this point in time, who's the lead agency, because they are intercepting this vehicle now. And, you know, you, you think about the strategy. I mean, you never want to second guess them. But when they get right behind this vehicle, I have a feeling that he's going to start to drive uh, much faster than he was driving before. And there's a lot of, uh, we're coming mm. up, but we're still in camera. We're about a mile south of the 101 freeway headed northbound on PCH. Uh, but the real dicey situation is when the suspect comes up to stop traffic and a red light. 
Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens here, see if he gets on the 101, exactly how he continues to proceed. Uh, the patrol cars, though, you can open up now, Marcel. I think you'll be able to see him real quick. It'll give you an idea just how far behind they are. Keep going to the left, if you would, to the camera. Just let him come out of the screen for a moment. The uh, patrol car is going to go in right there. So there's four of them. You can go back to the truck now. There's four CHP units behind the truck. And the truck does appear to be accelerating. So there's a good chance he sees them now in the side mirror and is deciding he's going to drive faster. And I think that's really one of the reasons the LAPD and LA County Sheriff's deputies decided to back off on this. They didn't want to encourage this individual in that truck, in that heavy truck, uh, to, to drive uh, even in a more erratic nature. Now, if he stays in the right lane, he's going to get on the 101 freeway uh, traveling southbound. That'll be a turn onto the 101 freeway, and it looks like that is going to be the case. So CHP will more than likely engage on the freeway. It's my, I, I believe they're going to do that now. It'll be interesting to see. Mm -hmm. But the vehicles on the 101 northbound, we're in uh, Camarillo, pr pretty much on the border of Camarillo and Oxnard. And it uh, looks like he's headed back down towards uh, Los Angeles. So if he continues on the 101 south uh, through Camarillo, and then, you know, of course, Thousand Oaks, uh, Woodland Hills, that area. Yeah. Uh, but on the freeway now, and you can see the patrol cars are behind him. Yeah, and he's been at this now uh, an hour, right? Because uh, you said yeah. you, you, we picked it up at 1130, but uh, you were watching it. There was uh, uh, law enforcement on his tail before we picked it up, so an hour now. Yeah, but about that, maybe even a little bit, um, you know, a little bit longer, more than an hour. Uh, the speeds here, though, you know, we talked about the weight of that vehicle. We don't know if it's full, but, you know, that's a big truck regardless. And the inertia, the speed vehicle, if he's involved in an incident at speed, it's not going to be pretty. Um, there's no question about that. Traffic up ahead on the 101 northbound is very light. The rain is sort of dissipated for the moment. It's not as heavy as it was in Malibu. And it looks like on the 101 north, I don't see any. I can see up into the, uh, the pass on the 101 north. And but he's I, on 101 South, isn't he? Delays. Is he on 101 Excuse South? Me? He's 101 South. The, one, the 101 Freeway Southbound. Yeah. He's headed okay. southbound heading on the 101, headed towards Los Angeles. Um, he was on PCH Northbound. Once he got to the 101, he picked up the 101 Freeway South. We're right at Beam Camarillo Airport now. We're just coming up on the, the airport itself. I think I will have to break away from this pursuit probably in the next 10 uh, minutes or so. We're keeping an eye on the fuel. Uh, and then I think we have our other helicopter, newscopter, that will take over with the coverage. Uh, but right now, I mean, you see the speeds. The speeds aren't really excessive. CHP has backed off. They have four units behind them in the right lane, but far enough behind them that I don't think that they, he actually sees them. Um, I think it's going to be a little more difficult for the suspect to see those patrol cars in the far right lane, you know, a quarter mile back. And if they were in the, the uh, left lane, just with the, the mirror advantage from uh, his viewpoint. And so at this point in time, you know, we have, they're the patrol cars. Uh, we have a pursuit that doesn't appear to be all that dangerous. Uh, it looks like he's able to stay in his lane, push in tight. We haven't seen a lot of that swerving fill up that we saw earlier. Maybe a little bit, but not excessive. He's still able to stay within the lines in his lane. But boy, it was, uh, it was uh, pretty sketchy there on PCH when he was doing a little swerving possibly into oncoming traffic. And then, of course, we know how, des how desperate the suspect is to get away when he just would not stop in uh, Santa Monica and went into oncoming traffic, hit another vehicle, but again, at a slow rate of speed and no one was hurt. Yeah. And we certainly hope how this one ends. You know, we cover enough of these things and it's just so dangerous for the public. Uh, I think the strategy is a great one, though, to be honest with you. I, I think it's much better that they back off and don't get right behind a suspect that they know is desperate to get away. Uh, and then have him drive at a more erratic pace because right now he's basically just driving the speed limit. Right, and, and you're not wrong about that, but I do wonder about the strategy change and the fact that the CHP showed up <clears throat> for uh, CHP patrol cars. Um, they seem like they were gaining on him, yep. and then they seem like they've been they've backed off. Yeah, you know, a supervisor may have saw our picture or somebody's picture and saw that if he did see them, he started to drive more erratically and they backed off, but they're not behind him at all now. I can't see him at my window. So at this point in time, you know, they've got him tracked. They're making radio calls. They're allow, you know, they're getting the other units in the area aware of what's going on so that if he gets off on one of the surface streets, they can be prepared. Um, you know, Ventura County Sheriff, they're going to be uh, patrolling this area. So they're aware of what's going on as well. And, you know, at some point in time, the suspect's going to have to stop. He's going to run out of gas. Um, and I really believe, like I mentioned earlier, the 
more than likely there's a tracker on that vehicle. It's just so many delivery trucks have trackers now. It's sort of unusual for one not to. Uh, and that could be one of the reasons they're not, um, they don't have an air unit overhead. Well, Scott, just as a measure of housekeeping, we know that at some point within the next 10 minutes, you're going to have to go refuel. We will continue to follow this, but we also want to let our viewers know that we're about to, we're in the middle of GMA3, what you need to know, and we're going to stick with this probably another five minutes or so. Uh, then we're going to let Scott go. Then we'll resume this on, um, oh, actually, it'll be even sooner than that. Okay, so That's Scott right. has gone. So, Scott. Uh, thank you for safe travels to, to go to Van Nuys and refuel. So we'll just kind of describe what we see, but we've just kind of logistically made a bit of a change as we're uh, about to wrap this up on ABC7. Yes, and now he is heading on the 101 uh, southbound back towards Los Angeles. Uh, but again, we picked it up around the 10 and the 405, and he made his way all the way uh, beyond Camarillo, I believe, turned around and got back on the 101 south. Which is, is somewhat interesting, and in, to be on that narrow lane that is PCH and such a dangerous road, uh, and then turning around and going right back where you came from. It's possible that the person wants to get back into familiar territory. If you're trying to get away from police, you're not going to want to just turn around on PCH because you'd have to stop to do that. So maybe this person knows the area well enough that the, the plan all along was to get on the 101 and get headed back uh, in the other direction, especially if they don't believe they're being followed at this point because law enforcement is so far behind them. Yeah, well, we never know what the plan is for the driver. It never makes any sense to us watching uh, because we believe, and as uh, it often happens, they are caught. Uh, and, and, and Scott mentioned the possibility that there's a tracker on this truck, and maybe that is one of the reasons also that law enforcement have chosen to sort of pull back. Uh, also, to your point, he does seem to act up aggressively when they uh, gain up on him, so uh, maybe that's another reason too. But um, even though the speeds aren't super high, we've seen faster pursuits, uh, the fact that he's in this heavy uh, car, uh, truck rather, heavy truck, um, and it looks like an older truck too, so we don't know the condition uh, of, of the vehicle. Um, that makes it more dangerous, despite the moderate speeds. Uh, you know, this, you know we, we can't really get into the mind of the person or necessarily how the person came to the vehicle, but it does strike me as a very high possibility this person just grabbed one of these vehicles from Lowe's and took off. You can rent these vehicles all the time. Um, they're sitting in the parking lots and, you know, in many cases, the Home Depots and Lowe's are, are having a lot of theft. So who knows what this is? It also could be somebody's property. They were simply moving and the person jumped in the vehicle and drove away. We don't know how they got it. We just know it was stolen. Right. We are a few seconds away from wrapping up this on ABC7. We're going to rejo rejoin GMA3 what you need to know, but if you'd like to continue to watch this pursuit, you can on our streaming platforms. I'm Philip Palmer along with Giovanna Lara. And we continue to follow the pursuit of this uh, stolen truck. Um, on the 101 southbound, uh, this is Ventura Freeway. We're not sure where he is at this point, but he was making his way There's back from Camarillo. Um, and again, this is a stolen truck. This is why authorities uh, began the chase, is what we understand. Uh, a single driver in the vehicle, as far as we know. This is the best getting, look we've yes, had of this person. Yes. It does look like if it's a male driver. We haven't known at this point because of the direction, but that right there is one of the reasons I also think that sometimes he drives somewhat erratically, is he's looking around in the cab. He's reaching across the way, and I just think sometimes he just keeps a straight line instead of uh, following and staying in lanes because he's just simply uh, driving without concern for anybody around him. And it's hard to drive these large vehicles. It really is. I mean, you have to have a lot of experience to be able to maneuver them and know where to look and how to see where the other cars are around it. Oh, the blind um, spots the are blind remarkable. Spots. Yeah. Exactly. So um, he's going about uh, just under 50 miles an hour right now, but we have seen some very aggressive driving uh, from uh, this, uh, this suspect, uh, driving on the wrong side of the road, clipping a vehicle, uh, nothing serious, no one was hurt, uh, but he is determined to get away. And I think, you know, you bring up a great point about the lack of uh, being able to see 
what's around you. And as it looks like this person was thinking about getting off in the exit, but whenever the person was, whenever this guy was getting in congested traffic, you're not going to know if somebody is right there to your right. Uh, the left side, you probably can see them, but not on the right. And so when he was just driving, I think those were the moments where it just didn't matter if anybody was there or not. He couldn't see them probably, and he didn't really care. So uh, when he would go to the left, there's the chances that he could see what was there a little better. But what's interesting about this right now is, again, it's just freeway speeds. And there are people who are driving faster than this person. And so we've seen cars right now, this little minivan is driving faster and going to pass. Uh, so it's not so much the speed, but the impatience and the recklessness and the willingness to do whatever uh, to continue moving forward for this truck that I think is, is the fear. That's right. Um, and uh, we have seen evidence of law enforcement uh, in, in pursuit initially. Uh, and then, as you know, we've been saying, they pulled back and then uh, all of through uh, the northern part of PCH, no one was following him. There was no evidence of any patrol vehicles. Uh, that would be through sort of the L.A. County Sheriff's um, uh, Department uh, jurisdiction. But then when he moved into Camarillo, we did see four CHP officer patrol cars uh, gain on him, tried to try to catch up with him. But then again, we saw some more aggressive driving from uh, from the suspect and they pulled back. Well, and that's that's the that was, I think, if, if those four officers or one, it started as one and then all of a sudden there were four. But if they all of a sudden decided, hey, may, now may be a chance, they got proof or they got more evidence that uh, what LAPD and what the sheriff had decided to do was the best course of action. Because as soon as that move was made that we saw on videotape just a moment ago uh, of, of the driving through Ventura County, right in that Camarillo area, that was proof that, hey, uh, he, um, a pit maneuver are probably out the window. Your best course of action would be a spike strip on this type of vehicle. Well, and even that is somewhat difficult, isn't it, Bruce, because of the rate of speed? I mean, how you can't put officers at risk, and this vehicle is significant in size, and, it, you know, you're going to have it, it, it could flip. Uh, you know, without if you all of a sudden lost air pressure, I mean, th th it, there's risk involved in that as well, yeah? That's correct, Philip. Yeah, I mean, ideally the spike strip will uh, deploy what we'll call uh, little pitons inside the tire, which lets the air out very, very slowly. It seems like CHP or Ventura County Sheriff's it may have a strategy of let's try to slow traffic behind it, create an operational zone area to follow or maybe do some intervention with this truck. Wow, look at this, look at this. There's contact with that oh, vehicle. Wow. He ran into another wow. box truck. And what's interesting is he was absolutely looking at the vehicle as he hit him. And now the question is, does that box truck pull over or does he try to re-engage? And that is a concern there because now look, the box truck that was hit is still pursuing the suspect vehicle. So Bruce, how does that change things for CHP? You can't have a road rage incident in addition to a chase. Yeah, that was very interesting that he hit the other box truck. And then the box truck may be under the impression of, hey, I'm going to follow this guy, get information to right. file a police report. Right. So CHP is going to have to intervene and pull that other box truck over. Yeah, because they have no idea. There's no police around. So the second vehicle has no idea that this is a pursuit suspect. And by the way, doesn't know if the person's armed, doesn't know if the person's dangerous, doesn't know if that truck has been stolen. But now Ooh, look, now he's, he's coming up and we've got to see and what he's got planned. Yeah, ideally, if Ooh, you're in that dangerous. type of situation, get on the phone, Look dial 911. They'll give you the proper information and dictate what you should do. And, and now the box truck is getting off the freeway here. Um, is this the Thousand Oaks? Exit? But look quickly, this person's coming up on an intersection here, and we don't know how they're going to play this, driving through the intersection, passing on the right, all the while. Now this box truck, see Can if he tries to take an exit and get over there with him. Um, because again, I keep going back to the person in this uh, Mr. Tire truck thinks that he's got a hit and run on his hands. Right. And so now look, it's, he might try to stop him. If he gets in front 
of the second, the suspect vehicle behind, Ooh. if he tries to slow down, yeah. again, creating more danger for the people around. And look at this. Oh, my oh. gosh. Wow. Another. This is he why is you just don't him. do this. He because is trying to stop him. It, absolutely. And now look at this. And th where is CHP at so this point, dangerous. Bruce? So what, what is dangerous. CHP thinking? Look at this. Oh, C CHP is trying to intervene as quickly as they can because this Mr. Tire Truck is taking positive action, you know, boxing him in, There's slowing him down. There. But I keep looking at all of the people on the highway right now, watching this occur, not realizing what's going on. And the Mr. Tire Truck, again, he thinks he's trying to stop a hit and run vehicle, but the person could be armed in that vehicle because it was stolen. We don't know how it was stolen. And then for the person in the second box truck to be, to be rear-ended, uh, at that point, even if you thought you were just getting information, you can't re-engage, right, Bruce? I mean, at some point, you have yeah, to understand is, life, and, yeah. and life and property are at risk here. But, but my question yeah, is, what, yeah. can, what can the CHP do about this? I mean, what can they do? Well, taking Philip's question first, okay. obviously you don't want to intervene and put yourself in a position of risking your life or other people's lives. It's a hit and run, pull out of the side of the road, he doesn't know CHP is there, but they will engage him and get him involved as far as all the legal paperwork and everything. Let CHP do their job. The other thing, um, and Giovanna, if you could repeat your question. I'm uh, sorry. My question is, what can you do about this situation as a CHP officer following these two guys? Well, they uh, got to pull over the Mr. Tire Truck and get him to disengage. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. To, to Phillip's point is, they've got to get that other truck out of the problem because they can't do anything legal, legally or lawfully and, and safely until you get that other truck out of the way. And at this point, that driver is hell-bent on stopping that truck. Well, and the danger to commuters anywhere near these two vehicles, these two vehicles at this size, if one of them flips, if one of them is uh, spun out and running into other vehicles, you're potentially causing great harm to other people. Oh, Look at this. Oh, my goodness. He is, a, he is intent on... On getting that box truck. At some stop. point, CHP's got to catch up to Mr. Tire and pull him over to to tell, let him know what's going on, right? Yeah. Now they just he's he's intervening again, and CHP has got to get there and solve this issue. Well, they um, the, CHP is yeah. following the suspect vehicle. Mr. Tire has now pulled over. Uh, we don't know what he's going to do, but I'm sure CHP will be up quickly. So now the suspect vehicle is turning off of the freeway. It looks like that is uh, Windsor or Jans Road, but has definitely pulled off the freeway. I guess he just decided he didn't want to deal with that other box truck anymore. Air 7 yeah, HD, if we can get them to pull up on that, the su that's the suspect vehicle there. The other vehicle is on the highway. Yeah, the main the main point to both of your uh, points is don't get involved. Yes. No, we, we, we hear that. How our signal is going to be affected the further north we go. Um, but again, we've been following this since about 1130 on ABC7. And then now we are on our streaming channel. Uh, and when we went to the stream, uh, that's when things uh, took a turn. Uh, there were plenty of opportunities uh, for unhappy outcomes during our broadcast on ABC7 when this person was driving in and out of traffic. But once we went to the stream uh, and he ran into that box truck, but that's again, but it's that almost exactly what we had seen elsewhere. He was driving along, he went to change lanes and either he couldn't see the box truck or he didn't know what he was doing, but he just didn't care and ran into somebody who was just minding their own business. And then that person, uh, everything started to escalate there for a moment. And that's that's many times the dangers of these these chases is, especially in surveillance mode, the people don't realize there's a chase going on right now. They don't realize what this person has done because they see no police officers. They see no law enforcement. And so they don't know to pull over. And then this person just sideswipes them and everything changes. Right. That seems to have been an accident, right, when he, he sort of clipped that, that other box truck. 
uh, but but you were talking about when we went from the stream when we started this uh, we were going from um, our linear coverage to the stream he became very aggressive when he realized that those CHP vehicles were behind him every time law enforcement has made their presence known he ra ratchets ratchets up the uh, the aggression and the speed and the uh, the weaving and the dangerous driving and Bruce Thomas stays with us here and uh, you know Bruce we, <clears throat> when we had LAPD. We had LA County Sheriff at one point. We had Ventura probably uh, taking a look at this, although we didn't see any law enforcement from Ventura. We did see that's when the CHP, as what Giovanna was just mentioning, uh, joined. So you've had multiple agencies, and for the most part, everybody has taken the same tact, which is track the vehicle. But how do things change for all of these agencies based off of what we just saw between the two box trucks? Because I still don't see any CHP. Yeah, I mean, there are a couple of things going on here. One, the unpredictability of the driver, and we've seen that, trying to pass a vehicle, ramming a vehicle, uh, getting off the freeway, <clears throat> getting on the freeway, totally unpredictable. The law enforcement seems to be in a tracking mode as the weather is deteriorating with rain. Police helicopters that normally would be able to follow with low-lying clouds and fog, they may not be able to. So in this case, it's going to be a kind of wait and see game. Maybe you can get some CHP ahead of the game because it is on the freeway to follow this person. But I don't think they're going to actively engage at this speed. Yeah, well, and and you said earlier, spike strip would be their only uh, possible, um, you know, avenue of stopping him. But but w with the rain and the other vehicles on the road, that's not likely. Well, the nice thing about the spike strip is once it's deployed and the little metal, I'll call them like straws, will then bed into the tire, it lets the air out very, very slowly. So it's almost like a, a controlled stop. But we have seen vehicles run on rims for a long period yes. of time with no rubber. So it's not a... It's not a panacea. It's not the solution for everything. Well, and if you look at this box truck, it's got four wheels on the back, if I'm looking at that correctly. So that makes it, if, if I'm, is it, is it two there on the back? I can't, uh, I thought it was. But yeah, it does look like there's two on the back and four on the back. So, you know, you're, now that makes that difficult. And, you know, you get the front, okay, but you're going to have to deflate upwards of six tires if you really want him to get down on the rims. Yeah, and the other thing, too, is to deploy the spike strip, you have to have a safe operational area, not just for the deployment, but for the officer who's going to deploy it, too. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things I was thinking about earlier, because the deployment of the spike strip is not just lay it out on the street and step back safely and watch. It, it usually is done in between one car coming by and another car coming by, and the officer has to toss it out there. Um, so with an unstable vehicle like this, you're really putting the officer at extreme risk uh, because if they swerve to miss that spike strip and tip that vehicle over, that could be life-threatening for the officer. Yeah, and one of the things we're seeing is the weather deteriorating rapidly mm -hmm. as they move up toward Ventura County, heading up toward Santa Barbara, Oxnard. So with the low-lying clouds, law enforcement may just have to give this up and just kind of watch on the on and off ramps as this vehicle goes by. Well, Bruce, uh, here's what we're going to do very quickly. The stream is going to continue with this. Uh, Giovanna and I are going to pause. We have some work that we have to do on ABC7, uh, but then we will rejoin you and we'll continue to follow this. So we'll be silent here for about two to three minutes, and then we will rejoin the chase. But the picture here on our stream will continue as authorities monitor this box truck, which was reported stolen about two hours ago.